God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We can um, start with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father, Lord. We thank you. Praise you, Lord, for this day, for this moment, for this time we get to spend with your word. Thank you, Lord, for you love us and you have given us this day where we can study your word, where we can learn your word, Lord. Lord, thank you because you, you love us. Your love, your mercy is always available for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you teach us. Lord, you love us so much, Lord. Help us, Lord. To live a godly life, Lord. Lord, you died for us. You took our sin, our punishment, our cross. And because of that, we have received all that you had for us. Lord, help us to live an abundant life, a victorious life, victorious life, an eternal life, a prosperous life. A life which is full of the harvest, Lord. Because your word says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Lord, we are those laborers. Help us to be those laborers. That we, when we speak, we only speak grace to the hearer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, and we praise the Lord. In the glorious and mighty name, Oh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, we will start. Learn on, um, this This is a very good thing. This parable is what Jesus is explaining is. This parable, we will study it for two, three days. More than that. This parable is the parable of how to build a house on the rock. And who is the person who builds his house on the rock? And who's the person who builds his house? Sorry. The wise man. The wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Okay, praise God. When your voice is not clear, praise the Lord. Yeah, yes, you know. So, um, yeah, that's what we were learning and we will learn. Okay, praise God. I was just saying what we were learning. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. Is there any disturbance on my side? No. no. Matthew chapter 7. Okay, therefore, if a preacher hears these sayings of mine, correct? Yeah. Okay, therefore, if a very anointed person, a Christian, hears these sayings of mine, am I correct? No. Okay, you know, read it. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, doeth them will be likened unto a wise man which will is up his house upon a rock. Okay, read up till 27. Okay, continue reading. 
and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock yeah and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and do not do 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 at them shall be likened unto a foolish man which build is house on the sand and the and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and it and great was the fall of it now what is this parable about what is this parable about this parable is about two men man is jesus is calling him a very wise man and another man is a very foolish man and one man built his house on the sand and the other one built his house on the rock we see two people here both of them heard the word it's not talking about one who heard the word the other didn't hear the word no it was both of them which heard the word both you know it's not talking about a christian and a non christian it's a no. both are christians it's not talking about a believer and a non believer is talking about both okay so there's no division here okay between a person uh, there's no is jesus is not the, there's no much difference from the outside you can make because they both go to church they both hear the gospel being preached okay. they both heard the word they both studied the word okay this god these two people they both come to church they both pray they both do everything they both fast they both go to church they both make rosary they both do everything so from outside there is no much difference but when you go deep okay jesus is explaining the much difference between these two men and that's what we will learn okay in the coming days and maybe even weeks one week we will be learning on what is the difference between a man who built his house on the sand and a man who built his house on the rock okay now these two people they both go to the church they both hear the word they both from outside they're not much different they both take notes okay even when they go to the preaching of the gospel they're very nice very kind nothing much difference between these two men but you don't you they don't the per, people from outside they don't know their personal life they don't know the personal life because uh from outside they might go be going to church they might pray but from inside from, we don't know really what, how is that personal life how they live actually this god now when the flood came we see here the flood came okay the winds blew and it beat upon the house this god thank you jesus it hit both the house it's not that the one house built on the rock didn't have the floods but the other had floods no now what is that a uh, storm uh, representing do you know what is the storm representing the test the test the temptations yeah exactly it's representing the tribulations the tests which come in our daily life now uh, we see uh, both of them even if they might go they might go you know even if a person who uh, goes to church even a person who prays even a person who fasts they both go through they go both go to trials there will be a storm which is coming now in our life there is always a storm which will come okay now i'm not now there's a big difference between persecution and when the storm comes like sickness poverty there's a big difference 
Now, persecution, you can say it comes from this world because of Jesus. Okay, it's not because of you. But sickness comes because the devil, it doesn't come from God. It's not God who's the cause of it. Persecution is God who's cause of it because it is because of Jesus who's inside us. That is why uh, we all be persecuted. We are all rejected. That's what happened to Paul. They were the disciples. They were rejected. Correct? Yes. So yes. we all rejected because it is because Jesus is inside us. Okay, I'll show you one scripture. Can you go to Acts? Acts chapter 7 verse 54. Yeah, Acts chapter 7 verse 54. Now, in this, um, we will read up till the last verse of this chapter. It's talking about, you see the title, the stoning of whom? Stephen. Stephen. Martin. Pardon? Stephen was one of the martyrs. Okay, praise God. Uh, Enoch, you can read. And they heard these things, and they were cut to the heart, and they danced, 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 at, danced. danced at on him with their teeth. Okay, but, okay, we see. Yeah. But he, being fully of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Okay, before we go forward, I'll just explain the scripture. Now we see here, even if there is trials and tribulations, okay, even though he's going through a suffering here, what does it say? But he being full of the Holy Ghost. He saw the glory of God. So what is the time I will see the glory of God? In times of trouble and tribulations or normally? What time will I see the glory of God? In times of trials and tribulations. Yes. Now, because that's why, you know, we see, I, I've always heard Papa say this. God will only speak to you when there are people around you. Yeah, he's saying, he, even if some people, okay, they will say, I will stay in a quiet room. That's the time God will speak to me. They go into a quiet room and that's the time God will speak to me. That's an absolute lie. Why? Because God will speak to you when there are people around you. Praise God. We see, okay, that, uh, you know, if a person is saying, if a person is rejected and he 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 feels rejected by the community, he feels rejected by the people. He, he has the, the spirit of rejection. That is the time when he said, you know, when a person is separated from all the other people, that means he will never be able to see God's plan working in his life. You know, to be separated from people is such a bad thing. Why? Why is it such a bad thing? It's a bad thing. It's because God can only use people to come into your life. Okay, uh, we will come back to this Acts. Can you go to Luke? 6, 38. Okay. Just scroll down a bit, you know. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I will read it because I want to read it. Okay, something. Okay, I want you to understand. Give and it shall be given unto you. Now, we see here, 
Most of the time, people give when they have. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They give when they have. But Jesus is saying, first you give, then you shall be, then you shall receive. Does he say receive and then you give? No. He's saying give and then you shall receive. It will be given unto you. A good measure. Okay. Press down. Shaken together and running over. Shall God give unto your Simon? Okay, not the other one who's awake. Okay, you found it, Enoch. Okay, I knew you found it. And anybody else realize what I did? Yes, I found it already. Okay, what did I do? You said give it. Uh, give it and it shall be given. Uh... Thing what I did was I saying, but God shall and God shall give unto your bosom. You know, founded it and he said, Man shall give unto your bosom. And that's why uh, when a person is rejected and he's separating himself from everyone, when he's separating himself from the community, if he's separating himself from the every he's want to be uh lonely want to isolate himself he want to be alone he want to be alone uh lonely he want to be completely he doesn't want anybody he, he doesn't want to speak to anyone nor he want anyone to come to speak to him when a person says that now that's the person who will not be able to see the plan of god working in his life because it because it is god god will not come and give to you God can, cannot come down and give to you. He will come physically and he will come as a, with a body and then he will come and give to you. No. no. But God will put in some of somebody's mind to give to you what you need. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, example. If you're in um, school, now, can God come down with a physical body and help you? No. No. Okay, I'm, maybe you might have the wisdom of God. You might understand. But he cannot come down physically and give to you. But he will use people. And that's why you have a teacher. And that's why you have parents. Why, why God has given you parents? Why? They are there to teach you. Teach you what? Teach you to play games. Teach you to watch cartoons. Teach you to ruin your life. Destroy your life. No. What to teach? Teach, teach, uh, teach us about the word of God. Word of God. The job, of the, parents, yeah, the job of the parents is to lead the children to the word of God. Now, when you come from school and now you came and um, when you, you go to your mother, she's in the kitchen, she's, a, she's sitting in the sitting room, you go to her, you beg, Ma, you kneel down, you beg. Can you please, please, please give me food? Okay. And if he asks you to say please, 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 hundred times, and then you will get the food, correct? No. She gives the food. She gives the food without asking. Yeah. Uh, even before you come from school, the food will be ready for you, correct? Yes. Even before you're hungry, the food will be ready for you. Now, if our parents, okay, now example, they're not born again, okay? But if when they're not born again, even though they're having the sin nature, being so evil, they can love you so much. And what about your father in heaven? How much does he love you? A lot. A lot. A lot. You can't, you can't even measure how much God loves you. Can't measure his love. Yeah. Yes, Owen, yeah, you're correct. Praise God. You know, uh, God God loves us this much. And because he's loved us this much, so big, he's telling us you just have to love this much. Forgive your, you know, in sight of God, to forgive my neighbor, it is only this much. To love my neighbor as myself is only this much. God has done that much. He's telling us to do this much. And even that small thing we can't do. Some people say, I am not Jesus, I can't forgive. Who said you are not Jesus? Maybe you are not Jesus, but you are like Jesus. Why? Because we all have the um, same nature of 
Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus, I have loved you this much. Now you just have to go and spread this love to you, the others. Now, Enoch, do you have a younger brother? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a younger sister, okay? Uh, you might have a younger sibling, okay? I also have. Okay, so we all have. Shaili, I know you have. I'm not sure about Lizen. Lizen, do you have? I have a younger sister. Okay. So, okay, now we have, we have received love from our parents, correct? They have done everything. Have you ever heard your, your parents are saying, love her, love him? Yes. yes a lot of times. A lot yes. of times, right? They tell you, love your brother, love your sister, take care of her. Am I correct? Yes. 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 That's the same way what is happening here. We have received this love from God. Now God is saying, go and love one another. Even they are your brother, even maybe they are, they are in sin. But still go and love them. That's why we see Paul is saying, brethren, 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 brethren. All the time he's saying brethren. Why? Because we are all spiritually brothers and sisters because we all come from one heavenly father. Maybe you might have another spiritual mother or father. For us, it is Papa. Sister Jocelyn, we might have, but still, it is God who is our main heavenly father. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Papa is only, uh, Papa, you know, he's the one who God has sent to us to preach the gospel. To share the good news. And that's why we are all born again. Thanks to Papa and his team, JCLM. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Yes. 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 Any questions so far? No. No. Yes, God. Yes. So, we have received this love from our Father, which is in heaven. Now we have to take the same love and love others. And this is what we see our parents are saying. Love your sister. Love your brother. Why? Because the love which we have received, in the same way, the love we have to love. Now, even if your sister or your brother is doing something wrong, okay, they are, or they are doing something wrong, will you be angry? No. 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 What will you do? You'll go and teach them and tell them to teach them how to do, correct? Yes. 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 Try to help them. That's the same way what we have to do. Jesus is saying, if somebody is telling you to take a, a heavy bag one mile, take it two miles. If he if he if he is saying uh, somebody is asking you something, don't just uh don't to borrow something, not just lend or to that person, but give it away. What is the difference between borrowing, lending, and giving? Giving means um, someone is like um. Uh... Okay, you don't know, we got confused. Yeah. Enoch, do you know? It's a very tricky question. No. Well, I don't know what's lending. What is the question? Lending means borrowing. Somebody is borrowing from you and you lend, you give. So what is it, uh, Jeremiah, what is the difference between lending and giving? Lending you know. Okay, I'll tell you. Lending means you are getting something from someone and giving me a um, uh, no, lending, lending is also when somebody is asking you something and you are replying and you are doing what the person is saying. Lending means that. I'll tell you. Borrowing means like, um, borrowing means like you are... Uh, Okay, I'm asking lending and giving, okay? Lending is when you give to somebody, you 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 share, but you want it back. Correct? That's the same meaning as borrowing. No, borrowing is when a person comes and asks you. But lending is when you give, but you accept that person to give it back. You give. Now, example, your friend is coming and asking you, can I have a pencil? If you give the pencil, then you're saying, okay, tomorrow give me the pencil, the, another pencil back. That's what lending is. 
Lending is on my side. Borrowing is on the other person's side. Borrowing is he's coming and asking me, can I borrow a pencil? Can I have a pencil? I'm saying I give you the pencil. After give it back. That is lending. And giving is I give it to you, but I don't care if you give it back. I don't want it back. Understood. Lending is you want it back, but giving is you don't want it back. And so Jesus is saying, if somebody is asking you to let to borrow something or to you don't lend but you give, why is he saying give? Means I don't want it back. Now, Luke six thirty eight is saying, give and it shall be given to you. Now somebody can take this into wrong context, because if a person is saying I will give, because if I give then I will receive more, no, so I will give. That is a selfish nature. Because he's saying because I want it, I'm giving. That is the selfish nature. So it can be in two ways. Two ways. Okay, praise God. Because a person can say, "Okay, God, I will receive more, no? So I will definitely give." But that's selfish because I want to receive something. Understood? Are you understanding? Yes. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's go back to Acts chapter seven, verse fifty-four. Okay, read from. Okay, fifty-five is. We were learning that only when there is, uh, when I am in trials and tribulations, that is the main time I will be able to see the glory of God working in my. Life and also there's one more point in the scripture. See this, and mm. Jesus sitting on the right hand of God. Correct. Standing. Standing. You know why he's standing? Because he can't see his own people in in so much suffering, and that's why he's standing. That's why he's standing. Praise God. Okay, read. You know, read. When I read, but can I but? Okay, Enoch read the fifty six and fifty seven, and then Owen you can read, and then again Enoch. Okay, read. Yeah. Oh, you you can read Owen next after this. Okay, read. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. Read from fifty six. We read that already. Read from fifty six. Read Enoch. Fifty-six and fifty-seven. And he said, "Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing up, standing on the right hand of God." So, and they, yeah. So Stephen can see what is he seeing? The trials and tribulations, no. or is he seeing the heavens? Oh, so when you are in trials. When you are in trials and tribulations, a person who is uh, in faith, he will be able to see the heavens open, the glory of God, and he will be able to see Jesus. Yeah, read. You know, read fifty-seven. And they cried out with a loud voice, and they stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Okay. Yeah. Over. You can read the last three verses. Owen, can read. Yeah. Okay. Um, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness witnesses lay down on their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Okay. Wait, Owen. Before you read the next verse, so now you see who was the cause of the stoning of Stephen. Saul. Saul. Who is Saul? You mean the king, right? Who was in the Old Testament? This Saul is the one who became Paul. So yes. who was it? So who was it? The one who stoned who was behind the the stoning of Stephen. Saul. Saul, who became the Paul. So he was there. So the stoning of Stephen took place of because of Saul. Then, 
Then I am the stone Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, read. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. When he say you, he fell asleep means he was dead. Okay. So, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. So, who was this? Stephen. So, no, Stephen is kneeling down and he cried up to God, saying, Lord, in a loud voice. Now, did he care the people around him? No. You know no. what we sometimes we do? We don't we don't say something loudly because of the people around us. Now, sometimes maybe we might not be able to say something like that so loudly. We might not be we might not be able to interrupt the teacher and all those things, maybe in school or we're not maybe able to able to. But in our family, this is the main bit where bit where we get a chance to. Are we say are we when we when there is any or tribulation, are we cry crying out with a loud voice or are we uh, are we crying out with a loud voice with the word of God or are we sad? Sad. Most of the time we are sad. But what about Stephen? Stephen was saying he cried with, he cried with a loud voice and his focus was on the Lord. And his focus was not on him. His focus was on others. When you say Jesus, Jesus was uh, full, you know, as a human, Jesus might want to come cover his shame as a human. But still, he focused on others. And that's why he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And that's what we see here. Lay not this sin to their charge. What does that mean? Well, Stephen is saying, let not this soul sin that he killed and he stoned me be in charge because I will be going to heaven, but I don't want him to experience hell. I also want him to be with Jesus eternally. That's, correct. That's what it means. And this after after this, in the Acts chapter 8 was 09, okay, in the, in after this, the coming chapters, you know what it says? The transformation of Saul into Paul. So these words which uh, Stephen spoke, they were not just in vain. They were not empty words. What is empty words? Empty words is when I speak something but I don't believe. Now these words were not empty words. These words which were words which were with meaning. And that's the same way when Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That is the words which are those words are also uh, fully, he was focusing on those words. And you know, we see Jesus is saying, uh, the white Bible is saying, Jesus embraced the cross with joy. How could he have joy? Because he was always focusing on what you and I will receive. What you and I will get and what he has taken on our cross and how we can and what we will get. How we will be connected to God. That's what, what he was focusing on. He was focusing directly on you and me. And this is the same thing that what is Jesus is saying. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on others. Can you go to Philippians chapter 2 verse 2? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Can you put Philippines? Chapter 2, verse 2. When I say focus on others, it means that you're, you're, you know, you're saying I love you so much. I don't care how you come against me, but I still love you. Praise God. Philippines 2, 2.
Yeah. Fulfill you my joy that you be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So, fulfill you my joy that you be like minded, having the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? The mind of, the mister, the mind of God. Yeah, what is the mind of God though? What is the mind of God? Full with wisdom and knowledge. Okay, what does the scripture say? Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. What is the mind of Christ? Having the same love, being of one accord, being of one community, no division. That is the mind of Christ. Because the and devil is... Jesus has. Pardon? Having the same love that Jesus has. Jesus has. You know, the nature of this, uh, of ma of the devil is that uh, pride. Hey, division. Division, yeah. But God's nature is of being one accord. Humbly, to be humility. Humility. To be united. He's so vain. Okay, this God. See this. Christ, you know, you see the title, Christ, example of humility. That's what we need to follow. The humble, how Jesus was humble, we have to be humble. How Jesus was, we have to be. And see the third verse. Let nothing. It doesn't say let something. It says let nothing be done through what? Strife or in glory. Through pride, through anger, through bitterness. For I should do nothing in strife. You know what it means? I should not give because I want to receive. It's saying you should give because you love. And saying let, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of heart. If you see in RSV, it's saying, uh, in, but in hum, hum, humble in your mind. Lowliness of mind. Praise God. Let each esteem others better than themselves. That doesn't mean you should have a low esteem. No. Low self-esteem. No. You're not saying you have to put yourself low. What that means is the same how, uh, you know, the same level which God has raised you up, the same level you have to bring others to. Okay, and see the fourth verse. Look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others. So remember I said you have to uh, be focused on others means look at the things of others, give and love others, even though they are, they are the same nature. I understand that I also have the same nature. I will also like them. But now I have to preach the gospel so they can be born again. Now this world might think you're trying to preach the gospel because you think you're in pride, you know everything. No, you're trying to preach the gospel for their good so that they can receive Jesus as their Lord God and Savior and be born again. Be saved, receive salvation. But they don't understand. And see the fifth verse. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. Have the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ, as we just said, was having the same love. Okay, there are so many things in these three verses. The mind of Christ is being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. Okay, so like-minded means the same thing. Oh, not uh, Christ is also not to do anything to strive for in glory, but to be lon loneliness in mind means humble in our mind. Esteem others better than yourself and not looking on what I, um, I have, but looking on what others have. So all these things, you know, there are seven and seven things here we see. This is the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is always to be humble, to focus on what others praise God. So uh, humble means God-centered. God, uh, when I automatically become God-centered, now I become other-centered because now I'm focusing on what I, what others, I'm focusing on other people's life.
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Any questions so far? Praise God. You know, uh, that's a person who builds his house on the a uh, rock and a person who builds his house on the sand a person who builds his house on the sand is completely focused on being in pride but a person who builds his house on the rock he is humbling himself now in this world he might look pride look he's building his house on the rock he has pride that his house didn't fall no he is so humble and he wants others also to be the same Maybe from outside he might be looking. Ah, uh, he see he's so pride. His house didn't fall. That's why he's in pride. No, he's he wants for you for for us the people who build the sand builders to be the same, so that when the storm comes down, they their house will not be blown over. That is a person who's humble. So this world humble. They think humble means pride, and what is pride? They think it is humble. His shyness is pride. They will think it's humble. Humility is being focused on others. Uh, for uh, you know, it's acts acts exactly contradicting. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Any questions? Yes. So um, we were saying okay about Stephen. This is what happened to Stephen. He did these seven things. So was Stephen having the mind of Christ? Yes. Yes, he had the mind of Christ. Um, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, any questions? No. If yeah. anybody wants to share what they have learned. I mean, the best of that. Any testimonies? Uh, excuse me. Alice. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have two testimonies. Two. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, on Sunday, uh, third Jan, uh, when uh, when I woke up, uh, I found that my throat was like irritating me. What did you repeat? Was, uh, uh, on no, what? Uh, on Sunday. The jam. Yeah. Um, when I woke up, uh, I just found myself that that my throat was like uh, irritating me very much. So I told my mom and and we said um, Mark eleven twenty three was his uh, no. Yeah, this is twenty four. Uh, that throat pain. I'm talking to you. Go and throw yourself into the sea. N never return to. And I am healthy and eating all food. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus. I kept repeating, and and I'm the body of Christ. To mm -hmm. pain, you have no place in me. I took salt, water, kagal, and uh, uh, all medicines, medicines which can cure me. Uh, so I took for three days, and yesterday evening, uh, uh, everything I everything was okay. I did not have to Praise go to the doctor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. That's amazing. Praise the Lord. And I want. Uh, I have one more. Also. Yeah. So, uh, as I'm a new uh, student at my new school, uh, the teacher used to like never. Call my name. Uh, I, uh, I was like getting disappointed. I, I used to, I used to, uh, try to uh, uh, open my mic and just tell man like, can I have a chance? 
uh, but she couldn't hear me very well. And then so she uh, like uh, didn't listen to, to me because she was taking the lesson. Yeah. So, so then I to my mother and and she gave me a scripture, uh, Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon the teacher and God's favor and grace is upon me. The same day, I was picked up by two teachers, not one time, but two times, actually. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Yes, Thank God. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's amazing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank yeah, you. any more testimonies? Anybody have any testimonies? No? Okay, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord, Alison. I got one. Yeah. I got two actually. Yeah. So like yesterday, yesterday night, like you know, um, I don't know where I bang or something. I don't know, but my knee was straining a lot, like you know, in the middle of the night. So I said, like you know, I won't take any medicine or put any uh, painkiller. And then I keep on confessing, like you know, I I remove the pain and all, like what uh, right to go, what to do, like you know. And then um, uh, I uh, then I keep on saying it, like you know. 1 Peter to 24 and uh, Psalm 22, 14, you know, and four nights, like, it was reduced and I couldn't, because we got the stairs to uh, come up and down, so, you know, I couldn't climb down then, like, you know, it was like, uh, I said, like, I won't take the medicine, I just want to go on the word of God, and then only once, uh, it was put in, like, you know, a barrel road, so I just put it, because I had to do all the work, so, I have to, I just applied once the ointment and just took the tablet and like I keep on confessing the scripture and yesterday night by night yeah no pain and I can walk up and down so I can do all my tasks so all glory to God and the word word of God is work mightily praise God praise God yes. thank you Jesus yes. Hallelujah yes. Yes. God that's amazing the, praise the Lord yes and the second testimony was. Uh, like, you know, from the group, what we are selected to, like, you know, one of my, uh, one of the person in the UK, she called, like, you know, day before yesterday, and she was suspecting a lot of sicknesses. She was suspecting lots of disease in her body because somebody told her, like, you know, even, um, uh, it's, it's like your salvation. I don't know, the, the sicknesses is salvation. And I said, no, the word of God doesn't say that. Like, I, I told her about uh, Psalm, I mean, uh, John 10, 10, yeah? Why yes, the sickness yes. come? Yes. And then I explained yes. her and then now uh, 1 Peter to 24 and everything. I told her to confess. I sent some scriptures and the videos and all. And yesterday, she went to the GP doctor and then she said, I, I got a, my uh, report is normal. And they just gave for the painkiller because upper upper body, she got all the pains and the pain. Uh, it was a terrible pain and the, it was for a long time. And because of the COVID, she couldn't go to the testing yeah. and all. It was delayed. Um, so yesterday she just texted me saying it. My report is normal. No, nothing. All glory to God for that. And um, yeah, just the oil man. And I told the oil man, just make sure you put, just say this oil man is not an oil man, but it's the blood of Jesus wherever you are going to apply the area. Yeah. yeah. And she said, okay. But she was very happy, like, you know, with that. And uh, she was very because she is very new to Papa, because she, like Papa's teaching, okay? Uh, but she used to pray in tongue and all. And there was one, one was still she was in words, you know, she told, she told me like, you know, um, I don't know what was it, but uh, I revoked the spirit operating in her that time, because I started praying in tongue. She told me like, you know, she got like, you know, evil thoughts against Mother Mary and Jesus to speak. Like, you know, uh, what she told me, like, uh, it, um, just say, like, a bad word to God. And then I just start praying in tongue, and I, it was like, you know, it wasn't, like, bearable. So it's automatically starting praying in tongue, and then she set free. Yeah, and she started, she was in praying in tongue for nearly two years. But, you know, it wasn't affecting her. Still, we came with a word to open her eyes, spiritual senses, and tell the truth of what the God, word of God says. And she said free day before yesterday and like yesterday she went to the doctor and report came normal and she 
she has to forgive some people as well. You know, she gave the forgiveness, so everything she sets free and says, God, oh, glory to God, she is totally set free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes, amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Any more testimonies? No. No. Anybody else? Okay. Praise God. We can do an ending prayer. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Anybody wants to do the ending prayer? I understand. Can I do the ending prayer? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you and praise the Lord Jesus that today has been a wonderful session for us today, Lord. And you have opened our eyes to your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are like flying eagles in the sky, full with the word of God. And we are now... And we are now... He healing and pro um, proclaiming the word of God, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that today, that today, Lord, it has been a wonderful session, Lord. We and we have learned many things from this session about your word, Lord. Lord Jesus, whatever we learn, Lord, we will, we will always do good, Lord, and whatever is. According to your word, Lord, we will do it, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are we are your children, Lord, and we always will respect others, Lord, and our elders, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that this is an amazing session, and we have we are listening so many testimonies, Lord and miracles happening in our life, Lord. Thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, in the glory and in the glorious mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, we can pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, I'll uh, tomorrow there will be a class tomorrow. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Same time. Have a blessed oh, yeah. day.